Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the one-hour chart of silver provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. Now you can see here we're going down to the place where I thought we were going to go to. Some significant volume. Not as much as on this rally, but it's clear that they want to take it down. It's been clear to me it and we want to see if you have dry powder, you want to wait for the big spike down if we're going to get one. That's going to be possibly the big buy of this mini bear market. After all, today being May 1st is pretty much the three-year anniversary of the May Day Massacre when silver was destroyed. And we're going to talk a little bit about that when we look at some of these articles that we look at but first I want to show you what happened today there was quite a smackdown that happened early on and that was on a decent amount of volume of course we had selling based upon fed speak and nonsense like that that always happens you'll see when we look at the articles how manipulated these markets are but I wanted to take you out to the long view here to show you the big picture on this. Now, the big May Day massacre here was actually on very low volume. It was very high volume for that period of time, but you can see that actually the Boston bombing massacre, which happened exactly on May 15th tax day. so. You know, this is crazy stuff, but silver seems to be right in the middle of all these crazy false flag things that they're doing. I believe, I honestly believe, I know people think I'm crazy, but I honestly believe the reason that is, is because silver is actually their Achilles heel. And it's the one thing that can take the bankers down. Gold can too, but not nearly to the extent of silver. But what I wanted to point out to you here is the amount of volume of course on the that we had on this um, tax day massacre was very very large ridiculous but also you can see that the amount of volume here on this latest one is actually second only to that big smackdown so it could be that we could get you know something like this and that's what I'm looking for. That's going to be a load the boat situation if we get that because we'll probably get this right after it, something like that. So let's look at some of the articles. It's just crazy. I can't keep up with the news. I apologize for not being on the member site as much as I've wanted to and not posted as many things. I've let my Bitcoin blog fall apart for now. I have to catch up with that. There's a lot of things I have to catch up with, but I'm very excited because I'm in the process of rolling out an entire new form of media that we're going to be doing together. And this is going to be, I'm very excited about this. It's, uh, I'm working on OBS and XSplit broadcasting software, working with Twitch TV and it's, trust me, it's going to be an amazing new form of media. It's going to start with gaming, but it's going to move into what I believe is going to be a new form of media where we're going to be together live on the Internet. Something invented by the gamers, but I think it has tremendous promise, and I'm just at the point of getting this done here. I've got a very, very high-end desktop machine that I'm using. I'm working with OBS and XSplit broadcasting software, and I've got a brand new mic. I'm going to be doing videos now in 1080p with very high quality audio. So hopefully this is going to be the last poor quality video audio update that you have to listen to. Hopefully I can get this out for the next video. So that's what I've been spending my time on, but I'm very excited about it. Now, the first one we want to look at here is Mary... Shapiro, is that who? Oh, no, it's Mary Jo White. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh. But uh, 
she looks like I don't know what she she looks like uh, an elf or something I don't know this it's crazy the people they put in there but she says the markets are not rigged <laughs> what's that saying that they say that never believe anything until it's officially denied so I'm not going to waste my time going into that but that's just uh, that really gives me a laugh here now the next article is from zero hedge we actually had two zero hedge articles on silver manipulation now if you remember I've mentioned this a number of times I got it started in 2007 but really started going in 2009 zero hedge didn't really start till 2009 either and I remember coming in onto zero hedge all the time and talking about silver manipulation there was a couple of others T Mosley and others but for the most part the audience and T Tyler or the Tylers whoever the editors are considered silver manipulation to be a wild conspiracy theory now look how far we've come two articles in one day so let's look at this one everyone has seen them those inexplicable bouts of furious selling in gold and silver coming out of nowhere with no news or catalyst which serve no rational price discovery purposes because no normal seller takes out the bid stack telegraphs a massive sell order and executes at the worst possible price now a lot of people have been talking about that and that's a really intuitive and obvious understanding people never want to put up or put down the price on themselves if they want to buy a lot of something they want to slowly accumulate it over time and if they want to sell a lot of something they want to dribble it out over time into rallies so they look for rallies to sell into so that they don't their volume doesn't crack the market because the worst thing that can happen to you is that you put the price up or down on yourself so that you're kind of selling into yourself it's a terrible thing and you can actually lose all the profits that you had Jesse Livermore frequently talked about that and turnaround times for getting out of a position well what we see of course in these markets is the exact opposite and what that tells us is that the purpose of this trading is not to make money the purpose of this trading is to manipulate the price of the commodity but merely are there to reprice the market higher or as happens in 90 percent of the cases lower in fact look no further than what happened first thing this morning when an unknown seller smashed all stops in one big sale and took silver to its lowest price for 2014 there was no news so one can't even blame a rogue algo overreacting to some headline and taking momentum ignition strategies a little too far in short this was a premeditated and deliberate selling of silver with one simple purpose push and reprice silver lower but this is nothing new precious metal traders especially those who are on the other side of the table of the BIS's Michael Charles or Benoit Gilson and countless other commercial banks are all too aware of this behavior and they take it for granted no, the real surprise is that suddenly none other than the CME is getting worried that manipulation this blatant is finally chasing regular retail traders away who are tired of being fleeced on a daily basis, leaving central banks and a few fixing banks to trade only with each other. Now, we know that that's already what's happening in the stock market. I can show you the charts let's go ahead and look at one here this is one that I'm still short of and that's price line so that's a stock that I very very uh, watch very carefully because I actually have a position in the market and what's so fascinating about the stock is that you can see there's no volume do you see this so the price of this stock you can see the price of this stock let's look at this say this rally from about 1137 to 1190 so that's a 60 point rally the largest block of stock was about 1700 shares most of these trades in fact you can look at some of these market moving trades like here's a 
here's a trade that moved the market from 51 up to 50. So a 10 point move in the market. And we had about 275 shares traded to move the stock $10. So this, this is a fake market. And the same thing is true of silver, except it's opposite. You see, there's no interest in, there's no one trading these stocks, but there's, well, there's no one trading either of them, but uh, the public is not at all involved in the stock market. And now the public is pulling away from the silver market, but the silver market, on the other hand, is churning massive volumes. But again, that is the banks trading back and forth, the bullion banks and the Federal Reserve or J.P. Morgan trading back and forth with themselves enormous amounts of paper silver so that they can ma manipulate the price. So you can see that 20 million spike there, 20 million contracts. I don't even know. I think that's 100 billion ounces. That's more than 100 years worth of silver that traded during that Boston bombing takedown. So no one's trading anymore, and they're getting worried about it. After all, it's the Muppets' money that is fair game, not that of the cartel members. According to Reuters, the CME, which at present has, fluctu has price fluctuation limits for futures contracts in some energy, agricultural commodities, and financial products, but not for its precious metals and base metals products, is considering introducing daily limits on gold and silver futures. In isn't that interesting? So they didn't have daily limits here <laughs> or here or here, but now they're going to do them, maybe because we're going to get this and this <laughs> and this. So they're going to try to cap the rise. That's what people are speculating. We don't have price limits in gold and silver. That's something we're looking into. Miguel V.S., CME Group Director of Metals Products, said in a panel discussion at an industry event in response to a question about how the exchange protects investors from excessive volatility. They sure weren't worried about that in the May smackdown. The biggest concern for the exchange is the array of sophisticated trading programs that are capable of significantly pushing the market higher or lower, V.S. said. Oh, so it's the programs. And whose programs who programs these programs? Could it be people? And perhaps one should look into whether the actual people are ordering the programs to significantly push the market higher or lower. It gets better. While the clueless hacks which appear on TV speculate about plunging trading volumes, anyone with half a brain knows why most have shunned capital markets. People know the market is one rigged, manipulated casino, and never more so than now. While until now, most of this impacted the stock and bond markets, it's now moving over to gold and silver. Quote, usually big moves and the fears of price slippage, the difference between the price at which a market player wants to execute an order and the price at which they're able to do so have turned some gold and silver futures investors away. He said in the first four months of the year, COMEX gold futures volume dropped 10% from a year ago. But the best part is this, the possible move reflects growing concern at the largest U.S. exchange of futures and options about big bouts of buying or selling that have caused huge fluctuations in prices without any apparent fundamental reason. Funny, one could almost call huge fluctuations in price without a reason manipulation, but better not because what little confidence in a rigged system exists may promptly dissolve even further. Still, while this is merely the latest alleged case when the CME promises to clean up its act, we can be confident nothing will happen. Quote, support for setting limits on price moves does not appear to be universal. I think the breaks in trading are good, but I wouldn't support fixing price moves, said one U.S. trader. Could said trader be manning the New York Fed trading desk at Liberty 33? Ironically, there may be some hope, though not out of the CME, it appears the cannibalization in the PM market industry is so bad that there may no longer be any silver fixers left. Also from Reuters, we learn that Deutsche Bank's exit from the London precious metal fixes will leave just two banks running a century-old system, 
that sets the global silver price, like stirring, likely stirring the debate about regulation of one of the most volatile commodity markets. The bank's decision on Tuesday to resign its seat ends an unsuccessful four-month search for a buyer as U.S. lawsuits alleging gold price rigging by the five banks that set the benchmark turned potential suitors cold, sources said. Quote, you can't have a silver fixing with just two people. That's a bit of nonsense, really, a London-based precious metal trader said, adding just two participants would restrict liquidity and competition. It would just be two people talking to each other. I think the regulator should be stepping up a little bit here. It should, be, it should, but like the CME, it most likely won't. Shortly before news of Deutsche's withdrawal on Tuesday, Britain's financial watchdog, the Financial Conduct Authority, said it could intervene if there were too few participants in commodity benchmarks, such as gold and silver. Quote, if there's a risk of dislocation because people are withdrawing and we think that breaches or is a risk to our objectives, then we would set that as one of our activities, but it is not entirely straightforward. Head of Enforcement and Financial Crime, Tracy McDermott, said on Tuesday. And who can possibly forget the CFT's own quest, or Bart rotating door Chilton's haircut, for that matter, to root out evil silver manipulators, most of which just happened to be its superiors, which found nothing wrong in a five-year probe, the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission investigated allegations that some of the world's biggest bullion banks, including J.P. Morgan and Chase, distorted silver future prices. After 7,000 hours of investigation, the U.S. Commodity Regulator found no evidence of wrongdoing and dropped the probe last September. The banks faced similar accusations in a long-running class action antitrust lawsuit that was dismissed at the end of last month by a federal appeals court. No investors, at least those who are not close to the reserve money system, are on their own. Whatever the outcome of the latest scrutiny, some users, including mining companies, which hedge production against the benchmark, may have little choice for now but to rely on it, even with just two members. Whether it's good or bad, or if it's down to two members, we have to use it. <laughs> Why? Why do you have to use a fix why do you have to have a fix why don't you just have a market <laughs> perhaps it would be best to just have one gold and silver price fixer left the federal reserve that way at least some integrity to an otherwise broken and manipulated market will be restored until then watch as trading volume slowly but surely trickle down to zero as everyone finally realizes what we've been saying since 2009 in a market so manipulated so rigged so artificial a far better and enjoyable option for investors around the world is just to take their money to Las Vegas. Well, no, no, Tyler, I've been saying that since 2009. You've been saying that since maybe 2011 or 2012. Anyway, so to the issue of investment demand, we've got this interesting article. This is from... SRS Rocco, Steve Stan Angelo report, and he exposes a number of things here, but I wanted to look at this Jeffrey Christian CPM silver statement here. Silver investment falls, but fabrication demand rises in 2013. Now, what would you take that to mean? I would take that to mean that less people are buying silver as an investment, just, you know, that you sock away, as opposed to silver that's being fabricated into industrial materials, etc. But no, it's just the opposite. That was the title of Kitco's article on the release of CPM Group's 2014 Silver Yearbook. If anybody deserved a fat F for writing that title... <laughs> That author certainly does. Let me start off by saying official coin sales are apart from what they term fabrication demand. Here's a chart showing global official coin sales from 2003 to 2013, and 2013 is his estimation, so you can see highest ever. These figures come from GFMS 2013 World Silver Survey CPM Group's competition. CPM Group states that official coin sales were a record 136 million ounces in 2013, 
My estimation was a bit low at 125 million ounces. But how in the hell did the investment demand fall in 2013 if official coin sales increased 30 to 40 million ounces? It's easy if you label the supposed surplus as net silver investment demand and poof, you can show a decline. Let me explain. I'm going to let you all in on a dirty secret. Official coin sales are counted as fabrication demand, not investment demand. That's right. When GFMS and CPM Group calculate their implied investment demand, they do not count official coins such as silver eagles, maples, philharmonics, pandas, etc. as investment demand. So all you slobs out there who believe you're investing in silver eagles, you're not. You're a fabrication investor. And it goes on. Furthermore, GFMS states that total silver ETFs increased 25 million ounces to 655 million ounces as of Q3 of 2013. So what I want to know, how did net silver investment demand decline in 2013 if the world purchased 35 to 40 million ounces more of official coins while total silver ETFs increased? It didn't. It's accounting smoke and mirrors. And it really is, people. You have to go by how hard they work to cover up the truth. If if they don't have to work too hard, then it might not be that big of a story. But if they are desperately working to manipulate the price through massive volume interventions, and they're desperately working to cover up and deny that the markets are rigged, and they're desperately working to deny that there's any kind of flash trading, but they're going to have to now get some kind of limits imposed just in case there's a rise. Then you know where there's smoke, there's fire. There's definitely a lot of smoke, and there's definitely fire. And this is the fire. I expect that the story for silver is probably even more drastic than that of gold. But this is from Silver Doctors. Numbers don't lie. U.S. and U.K. supplying nearly all the gold heading to Asia via Switzerland. And I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to show you the chart. Here's the chart. Largest gold importers from Switzerland, 2014. Net export from January to March. And this is in tons. Hong Kong, India, China, Singapore. Saudi Arabia, Germany, looks like they're going to have to buy their gold instead of getting it from the Fed. And who are the largest exporters? <laughs> the UK, the USA, and then Turkey and then Russia. So here are the countries on the rise. Here are the countries on a massive decline. These are the countries that are going down. These are the countries that are going into potentially a multi-decade depression, if not end of civilization type of situation, because their politicians are simply destroying their nation by exporting all the gold and silver and sending it to the east. I've been talking about this for years, and people have denied it, but it is happening the Anglo-American empire is crumbling, and the Asian empires are rising. This is a trend for the entire century, so you better position yourself accordingly. So back to the chart, it looks like we're going to have a resolution of this issue here of whether or not they're going to take silver down. My prediction, a drastic prediction, is a potential 15 bottom on this one, and that's going to be an amazing buy point if we can get that. So be looking for that. Keep your powder dry. If we get that, uh, it will be an incredible buying opportunity, and we'll talk to you next time.